Well, happy Thursday. Today is December 19th, 2019, and I'm Angela Hooper Minifield, and this is your HR Moment. Um, so yesterday, one of the topics we talked about was how to set goals with your team, right? Because if you'll go back to yesterday's video, one of the things we mentioned was if we seek to set goals in areas that our team members are either committed to or that they can see that they can add value because it hits their sweet spot, one, you won't have as difficult a time to help them set goals, but secondly, they'll be more energetic about it. So hopefully, you know, if you didn't catch that video, feel free to go back and look at yesterday's video or the video dated December 18th. But today we want to take that a little step further because as we know, it's not often about setting the goal that's the issue, right? Because people set goals all the time. I mean, everybody you meet has a goal to do something. The problem is, or, or the uh, issue that comes up is, do they achieve those goals? And so it's not always what we know to do versus what we do. So instead of just talking about how to set goals, I thought it was really important that we talked a little bit today about goal achievement or goal attainment. And so there are a few things that has helped me and some of my clients through the years because, you know, I'll just be totally transparent with you guys. I do set my share of goals as well. And, you know, while I am better, at accomplishing the things that are really important to me. I know that I can also uh, be guilty of having a track record of saying I was going to do some things and not doing it. And so a few of the things that help me, and as I always love to say, this is a way, not the way, right? But you might find that this can help you. So when you're trying to help your team, one of the first things I find to do is to be very singular focused in what area I want to focus on within that goal. So. Let's say I have a problem with being on time, and so you're helping me do a better job of that. Well, one of the things we can do is first figure out what are the things that are keeping me from getting where I need to be. So start with the end in mind, right? And then work backwards and say, okay, so if this is where the hindrances are, what's one thing we can do differently to overcome that? Just one thing, right? Oftentimes we have this list or plethora of things that we say we're going to do in order to reach that goal. And I can speak from my own personal experience, that can feel overwhelming because I'm trying to keep up with these 10 ancillary things that I need to do in order to achieve X. How about I just pick one thing? Again, we can use this in the area of personal weight loss because again, it's December. Guess what? Gym enrollments are going to go up in the next couple of weeks and people will be looking to lose weight. Sometimes even organizations set up challenges for their team members, right? But what I have found to help me be more successful, and I remember even in my coaching in the health industry, was that if I could just get my uh, participants to create one new habit, one new healthy habit, and or change that one thing that was the biggest obstacle. Because again, if we can uh, get some low hanging fruit or get a quick win, people are more inclined to stay in the game. So that could be something as simple as cutting out sodas or saying I'm going to move 15 minutes a day. But my point is, instead of saying I'm cutting out carbs, I'm not um, having sugar, you know, I'm going to work out, you know, 50 minutes every day, I'm going to, you know, fill in the blank. Well, that's just a lot to keep up with. And so then when people miss one or two of those things, they start to feel like, you know, failures. Um, they talk bad to themselves. And the next thing you know, they're off the goal achievement path. And so again, if we could just find one thing in the area that we want to focus on to give our undivided attention, create a new habit there, a new learn. Again, we all have learning models, right? How we learn, how we've achieved success. So for some of us, it also includes going back to a time where we did successfully achieve a goal, looking at how we did that and using that, because that for us could probably be our learning model, but we just haven't memorialized it yet or haven't put it pen to paper to realize that's really how we learn. So again, figuring out that one thing you can do. So for me, networking may be a great thing to do for my business, right? Because people can't use my services if they don't know that they exist. And so then the one thing that I can do because I'm not a big, a big networker is to say, 
you know, once a week or once a month, I will attend X meeting. And when I'm there, I will be intentional about connecting with this number of people. That's just one thing. And what will happen is I'll get better at networking. It'll be more consistent. And then the next thing I know, I don't have to talk to myself about that habit. It'll be ingrained in me. And so then I'll move on to the next habit. Hopefully that makes sense. The other thing that has helped me and some of my clients is the fact that we exercise a little mercy with ourselves. So what do I mean by that? We're not perfect. Very seldom do people do what they plan to do um, at the 100th percentile. So what do I mean by that? Let's say, you know, my objective is to make or to average X dollars per month in my business. So let's just say I say $20,000 a month. Well, maybe some months I'll hit 20, but there may be some months I hit 10. And so what I mean by mercy is celebrate the 20s. Be happy with the tens and look at how I can do those better to get closer to my goal. Or maybe it's again with the health and fitness. Maybe I said, you know what, I'm going to work out five days a week for an hour a day. But one week is a little different. I travel, I get delays, things happen. I need to have mercy with myself and say, hey, in spite of everything that I went through this week, hey, I got three days in, yay me. So in other words, that energy that I project and how I treat myself about the goal achievement has an impact on my mindset also. You know, one of the things my coach helped me with is just the paradigm of good, better, best, right? The best case scenario is me doing exactly as I described, but what can I do that would be good? And then what's better? So again, if my objective is to go to one networking event a week, Maybe this month, I only went to one a month. Well, it's not the best, right? It wasn't the full goal, but it's better than nothing. So I can count it as still good. And then I celebrate that. But also as each month passes, I check in, I look at my milestones and I see what can I tweak or do differently to again, get me closer to that goal. So maybe by the mid-year point, Instead of having thrown those goals away, I'm closer and I've created new habits that get me, you know, to a point that potentially I can do these things. So those are some things we can do with our team, because guess what? They're not going to change overnight, you know, and we have to one again, have mercy and realize that perfection is not even a possibility. And so we celebrate the wins that we do get. But then also we continue to talk about where we are, look at our milestones, talk about the behaviors that need to shift, but not just the behaviors, the thinking, right? Because belief leads, uh, leads to action and action leads to results. You can't just change the actions and think you're going to get a new result. You have to start with your belief system. So we have to do that as well. And so Maybe that's what we'll talk about tomorrow, belief system. Hey, great idea. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Um, these are just a couple of small tips. Again, I'm always looking for the short win. I could give you a list of 20 things you could do to achieve goals. You know, there's the SMART acronym, right? Specific, measurable, um, achievable, realistic, and time sensitive. We know those things though, yet we're still not achieving our goals. So again, start small. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is if one advance, if one at, uh, if I can't think of my quote, ah, my brain just went crazy. But anyway, we want to take a step in the right direction. We don't have to take all the steps because look at it this way. Every step you take in the right direction, even if there's longer pauses in between, you still get there. You know, you can compare the stride and my steps to that of, you know, an infant or a baby. Maybe the baby takes little steps and holds on every step of the way. And I'm taking these long legged, huge steps, or maybe I'm even able to run. I may get there faster, but guess what? The baby gets there too. It just gets there in their own time. So meet yourself where you are. Know that you're exactly where you're supposed to be. And don't compare your success on the goal or the journey to anyone else's. You can have those things you desire this time next year if you begin the year with the right mindset, doing the right things, and just staying consistent. So 
Again, my name is Angela Hooper Minifield of Minifield and Associates, and this has been your HR Moment for December 19, 2019. Talk to you soon. Bye.